Well, after years of growing problems due to homelessness, Mayor Adams is aiming to clear out the many homeless encampments that have cropped up around the city. And it's really bad. Mm. Those of us who walk around, you know what's out there. Mayor Eric Adams is joining us right now in our studio. Thank you so much for being here on the set with us. <laughs> no, no more Zooms. No, no more Zooms. Okay, let's get down to it. Homeless yes. encampments, you started clearing some of them out yesterday. And now you say the city's shelter system is safe. How did you come to that conclusion? No, it's, it's the safest place for people who are homeless. And we're always going to improve on our shelter system. I've been visiting shelters all over, unannounced, because I want to see the product. And I want to make sure people have a suitable living environment with dignity. There's no dignity living on the streets. Let me ask you something, Mayor. How much does it cost us? to house somebody in our shelter system right now? Because the way New York City is, I'm sure it's a fortune. Mm -hmm. And like, are we getting our money's worth? I don't believe we, we are. Uh, billions of dollars are being spent. Uh, we must make sure that number one, there's a serious a number of units that are empty, and we're going to put in place a real plan to expedite that. Those 2,500 apartments exactly. that you're talking about. Unacceptable, yeah. unacceptable. Too much bureaucracy. Not enough coordination. The team is coming together to make sure that we don't make the mistakes of the past. Yeah, but you kind of got to hold people accountable for that, right? For the Human Resources Administration for leaving those 2,500 apartments just completely empty. Do you hold people accountable for that? How, how does that work? Yes, but you know, the first thing is we have to look at the systems, and I talk about this all the time, real time, the same way we did the encampments. Uh, if you don't inspect what you expect, it's all suspect. Mm. I like mm -hmm. to say, Mom used to tell me that. And so we had no real system of tracking exactly where people are in the process, duplication of service, re-traumatizing people. They have to tell this story over and over again. We're going to remove all of that and get people in the apartments in an expeditious fashion. I, I got to ask you about the subway because, I mean, you know, that is an integral part of getting the city back to normal. The traffic is back. We've seen that on the streets. <laughs> yes. The ridership in the subway system, it, it's, it's not because people have a fear of, you know, they're fearing for their safety. And uh, we've seen what has happened in the past couple months. It is can be scary. You're I've dead on. You're 100% you're right. And I'm in the subway just about every night. Uh, mm -hmm. Last night I was down at several stations walking through, speaking with passengers. Uh, and that is that could be the number one inhibitor of getting people back uh, into office spaces. But we're doing a great job in executing the plan. Our senior leadership is down there. My chiefs are down there like I am. I say if I'm down there 2 and 8 a.m. Mm -hmm. in the morning, everyone needs to be on the front line. But this line. is like a zero tolerance policy that you're implementing now. So what does that, what does that look like? Well, a couple of things. Uh, we have eroded our subway system. We've allowed encampments in the tunnels. We've allowed people to sleep on the train. The trains are not for living. They're for transportation. And we have just ignored basic problems, uh, theft of service, not paying their fare. There's a process if you can't pay your fare that you can get on the subway system. And we put millions into the reduced fare metro car. Yeah. And so we just need the basic rules of civility that is part of our transportation system. So as we know, crime is up as 45% in New York City. Uh, you know. Most people say they want reform of bail reform. You have sent your police commissioner and um, your chief advisors, Ingrid, to Albany this week to try to, I guess, you know, talk some sense into the, the legislators in Albany. Are you making any headway? Well, negotiations are going great, and you know when you're in the midst of good negotiation, the worst thing you can do is aggravate those negotiations. We are in Albany walking the halls. The commissioner spent the day up there, uh, as well as the deputy mayor of public safety. And so we are really focused on doing things around crime. And it's not only bail, it is also dealing with those who are carrying guns, repeated offenders. Mm -hmm. You know, there's just a small number of people who are creating the crimes in our city. They're just part of a revolving door process, and we, we need to change that mindset. So we, we asked for people to send us questions on Twitter. <laughs> a lot of people are asking about the vaccine mandate, and will you reconsider hiring those people who were fired because they did not get a vaccine? You know, uh, Including your city council speaker, Ms. Adams. No she, relation. She got a, she got a vaccine. I know, but she's oh. calling them maybe to reconsider the you, vaccine mandate for those who were fired. You and I both know there are 8.8 .8 million people, 30 million opinions, 
but one mayor must make the decisions. I got to make the right decisions for the city, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to have the compassion, the understanding. I'm going to listen to my doctors, but I'm going to make the right decision. This economy must come back. We have to make sure another variant doesn't come and shut down our city. I am focused on making sure this city is functioning. But and you don't want to rehire those people, the city workers. Well, what about the overwhelming number of city employees who did the right thing? And we have another variant that's right on our heels. And if we are not serious about our rules and regulations, then no one is going to respect them. I remember the days, as you did, of when this city was shut down and we had more tr trucks with our loved ones dying. We have to do what's right by the city. And I take my hat off to the overwhelming of New Yorkers. They responded. You know, people are really missing the fact that the overwhelming number of New Yorkers said this is a tough time. We're going to come together and we're going to do the right thing for our city. Now, people who had religious exemptions, people who had um, issues that they couldn't take vaccines, there was a process for them not to be able to do so. But many people were hired with the understanding they took they needed to take a vaccine. And then once they got the job, they decided they were not going to do that. That's just not right. Well, when you have these public, you know, entities that have 98 percent vaccination, which we you know, you're applauding them for most of the majority doing the right thing. But you have those two percent, those one percenters. You don't think maybe is there is there like a legal ramification for allowing them to come back or is this just <clears> a well, and, and I think that's a great question you're asking because there is a legal process if someone, someone believes that they were treated unfairly. That's what our court systems are for. Mm -hmm. uh, but our lawyers, the judges have ruled several times this is the right thing to do. We're following the complete process. And I believe those New Yorkers that don't understand, you're more likely uh, to be hospitalized or lose your life if you're not boosted and, and vaccinated. They need to reconsider what they're doing to their families and their loved ones that are around them. So uh, trending right now, of course, is Will Smith. <laughs> <laughs> Wondering if uh. that happened in New York City at Radio City Music Hall. Great question. Boy, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> How would you react to Will Smith smacking Chris Rock? Would you say there need to be repercussions? Well, and violence is never the answer. Mm. It's a painful moment. You know, this is the life we're in. Listen, they did a skit on me on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> I had to laugh <laughs> with it, you know. But, you know, sometimes when you're dealing with an illness in a loved one, you become emotional. And sometimes we have to think through our actions and not react through our passion. And uh, I believe, as he acknowledged, and I accept his apology, and it's up to Chris Rock to determine if he wants to move forward with any type of yeah, action. Yeah, but should he be action. punished? Should he give back his award? I mean, do you... Well, um, I don't think he should. You know, the, the worst day in our life should not be the description of our entire life. You know, Will Smith has been an amazing actor, humanitarian, he has been a real leader. Uh, I think he had a bad day, and you know, I don't believe we should define his entire life. We all have bad days. I have bad days, you know, and I don't want to be defined by, hey, Eric, you did something inappropriate, let's forget everything you have done. And that's how I feel about this. It was a bad day, never violent, should never be used. Uh, but I think Will, he apologized and he said he was wrong. He's embarrassed. Uh, I think that we should you know, accept this apology. So uh, I know you alluded to this uh, in your press conference yesterday that you, in inher you inherited a dysfunctional city. Did you have any idea what you were getting into? <laughs> I mean, because it seems like it just exploded when you became mayor. When you sat down, you went to Gracie Mansion. You sat down with the former mayor. Did he tell you, Eric, <laughs> you got problems in River City? You know, uh, 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 yes, he did. Uh, but I was just so prepared for it. You know, because think about the life that I have lived. Uh, it put me in the circumstances that people are living right now. I know, but this is really bad. Crimes up 45 percent, homeless all over the place. I, I went to, I had to meet a lawyer near Macy's, mm -hmm. and you know I'm a Brooklynite like you are, right, okay? Right. And you're it, tough. It's tough. <laughs> I was scared out of my mind, and then I talked to the lawyer who worked there, and he said, "You have to see what it's like seven o'clock in the morning over here." Right. And he that, was scared. And that's why we're cleaning up encampments, mm. putting people in a dignified place instead of living on the streets. 
That's why we're making sure that we bring back a real thoughtfulness to our city. We're going to turn around. Trust me, this city is going to turn around. How Emplo long? How long Empl will employment is going to improve? What what, our what benchmark are you giving yourself for turning it around? Great question. Great question. Think about this for a moment. Uh, uh, a week and a half ago, I said within two weeks we're going to remove all the encampments in our city. We, we're doing it earlier because I sent the right message to clear message. The, when you don't have real, clear leadership and expectations, you're going to receive an inferior product. Taxpayers were not getting their money's worth, and they're going to get their money's worth under me. Do you think um, Mayor de Blasio should have been fired for the work that he did? <laughs> no, seriously, because, you know, you basically are running a company, okay? <laughs> if this was a private company, Somebody, somebody's head would have been on the line. There was, there's a book called New York, New York, New York, where a woman comes up to, it's about the history of New York, and a woman comes up to Mayor Koch and said, Mr. Mayor, can you make our city uh, work again? He looked at her and said, ma'am, our city never worked. Mm. Let's not kid ourselves. Mm. Long before Bill de Blasio, long before Bloomberg, long before Koch and everyone else, we've never had it right in our city and cities across America. But this some is people our opportunity can make it, get it worse right. than others. I'm sorry? Some people can make it worse than others. And what you inherited was something that we've seen kind of can expeditedly go downhill. <laughs> Well, it's a, almost a perfect storm. Uh, COVID, our economy, it all came together. Don't underestimate the impact of COVID. Mental health, yeah. businesses closed down, people lost loved ones. They're still traumatized. Imagine, imagine dropping your mother off never to see her again. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, COVID traumatized us. So we have to deal with the physical aspects of COVID and the mental a aspects of COVID. Increasing the number of attempted suicides, young people feeling depressed over and over again. We have to have a real holistic approach and come back better than what we were and in the inequalities that we witnessed. And I think holistic also includes a mindset, which is why I want to ask you, what are you most looking forward to for, for this year? A uh, com combination to get the city up and operating, do some exciting things. You know, we've lost our coolness. You know, people complain because I go to a Broadway opening. I'm not listening to that noise, man. This city is alive and vibrant. What you were you? hanging out with ASAP Rocky the other night. <laughs> Where was my invitation? <laughs> but it, no, I'm just looking forward to springtime and summertime in the greatest city on the globe. And I'm going to be out there telling people, let's get out of uh, the terrible pain of COVID. Let's get back and enjoy As our wartime city. general. That's right. Uh, what does that mean? <laughs> well, we're at war. We're yeah. at war with our economy. We're at war with COVID. We're at yeah. war with crime. Uh, there are peacetime leaders in. There are wartime leaders. I'm a wartime leader, uh, and I'm not going to lead from the rear. I'm going to lead from the front. That's why I'm in the subway station. That's why I go to senior centers, facilities. That's why I go to cops that, that make these uh, great arrests and go to homeless shelters. People want to see their leaders on the ground fighting the battle with them. How soon will you get uh, some of the homeless in those 2,500 apartments? Uh, we, we, you're going to watch something uh, just as I gave myself a deadline. I'm building an infrastructure right now, mm -hmm. and within the next day or so, I'm going to make a formal announcement on how long it's going to take me so people can say, this is what you promised, Eric. Let's deliver the same way we did with the encampments. All right, yeah. we're writing it all down. <laughs> I want your name on this paper, guarantee. Don't sign anything. <laughs> Actually, it's a check. Uh, <laughs> okay, sign that. Sign that. <laughs> anyway. Grace, Thank you, always good Mayor. seeing you. You know, we there's dancing it. in the streets out front of the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> I think we did that, Native New Yorker. Ready for another one. Anyway, thank you, Mayor thank you. Adams. Appreciate good that. Both. Good day's coming right back.